what are the best items you should get for your units. Join me as we go through the physical summon meta build damage dealer heroes and dark elf as a bonus hero. And we start this out with giants, those big boys who are absolute beasts in the current meta of the game. For the record, this is how they rank in my late game wave build, which is a little bit less than 5 million waves in the game. And this is how they rank on my secondary account, which is a little bit over 100,000 waves in the game. So they are absolutely broken once you get the items for them. And they hit like a truck. And what's better than hitting your enemies with trucks? Hitting them with more trucks, of course. What else that could be? So the best line you can get for your giants is the legendary line plus one summoned unit. If you have this line on both weapon and accessory, you will be able to summon two extra giants per cast, which means six giants per cast. And that's absolutely broken. Second best, most important lines you want to look for giants are critical chance and critical damage in this order. So in a perfect world, the perfect item would have plus one summoned unit line and two critical lines with either critical chance or critical damage. And since perfect items are really hard to come by, it takes a lot of luck to get those. The second most optimal lines you can fill those lines with are physical damage and person dual damage. And these are on lower priority than the critical lines, but they are also helpful for your giants. Now, also lines like attack speed or cooldown might also help them out a little bit, but again, those are on a lower priority tier than the previously mentioned ones. And do note that this plus one summon unit line, which is the best line, is only available on L and E tier items. So if you are unable to get those kind of items yet, then for your S and A tier items, pick two of the lines that you can get from the lines that you see on the screen line right now, excluding the plus one summoned unit line. Those items will get you far enough that you can eventually get those legendary and E tier items with that plus one summoned unit line. And for the runes, get attack speed runes. They are easy to get, they drop from the beginner dungeon, they are easily farmable in very early game, and they will help you further boost your giant's DPS a lot once you get good items for those runes. And for example, these are my current giant items on my main account. As you can see, they are very good, but there's still a little bit of room for improvement with the physical damage line on the sword. And then moving on to Edward. Now, like giants, Edward is also a physical type hero with physical type summons. But instead of hitting like trucks, they hit like vans maybe. Uh, but the items, the priority lines you want to get for Edward are exactly the same as for Giants. So plus one summoned unit would be the best one, and then critical chance and critical damage lines. In addition to those, also the secondary lines, physical damage and percentual damage, maybe even attack speed line, those will help out Edward's damage as well. But again, those, those are on a lower priority tier than the critical and plus one summoned unit line. And now, this is important. Giants and Edward, they both want the same kind of items. But the priority of items is always on giants. So if you get a good sword or good accessory, it should go to the giants first and foremost. And then if you get a second one, it should go to Edward. Because giants are more powerful, they should be boosted more. And Edward is a secondary damage dealer for your build. For your runes for Edward, you can also get attack speed runes just like you do for giants. But do know that before getting runes, you should focus on getting good items first. They are more important in that priority list. The runes come after you get decent or really, really good items. That's melee units done. There's no time to waste. Let's move to the ranged unit. So we have Dark Bowmaster next. She's an excellent unit for killing bosses during your waves, and she also helps you against normal monsters and against things like the flying chapelin, for example, during your wave. So she's a really viable unit for your physical summon waving build. And she has the fire rate that machine guns can only be jealous of. Like, those hands are fast. Now, the best items for Dark Bowmaster are critical chance and critical damage lines. So in ideal world, you would want to have three critical lines on both items. That would be like four critical chance and two critical damage lines, or three critical chance and three critical damage lines in total of the, in your both items combined. So an example item like that would look like this. Now, while the critical damage and critical chance lines are the best, in early game it could be beneficial for you to include a couple of cooldown lines for your Dark Bowmaster as well, because that could make your Dark Bowmaster be able to double broke. And what this means is that the cooldown of Dark Bowmaster would be lower than the cooldown of Pure Wizard, allowing you to cast the Strafe ability more often, allowing her to deal with enemies more reliably and more consistently in early game, before you get your Pure Wizard cooldown to be lower and lower once you proceed through the game and get better items for your Pure Wizard. 
and additional lines in here as well would be the physical damage and the person dual damage lines and if you don't get anything better even boss damage lines can help but do note that boss damage is not that great because it only helps you against bosses it doesn't give you any benefit against any other type of enemies during the waves and she already has a plus 100 person damage the bosses built in in her passive ability so try to get those critical lines if possible and now that said, the current bow on my bowmaster on my main account does have a boss damage line, but that is because my luck with items, my with weapons is poop. And do note that the plus one arrow, the legendary plus one arrow line, does not work for bowmaster strafe ability, so it's not that desirable line for her. So you should get those critical lines instead. And for runes, again, attack speed runes will work just well. They work with the strafe ability. They will boost your dark bowmasters. DPS and they will be great for you, easily foundable from the beginner dungeon like said before and once you get to the expert dungeon you could basically use the best like max tier, max roll physical damage runes as well but attack speed runes are just more convenient, more consistent and better for you to get. And now moving on to Sniper. Now, similar to what we did with Giants and Edward, we can kind of also do with Dark Bowmaster and Sniper. They both want the same kind of items, but usually Dark Bowmaster takes priority with the better items. So, again, the best lines for Sniper would be Critical Chance and Critical Damage lines. Now, again, in ideal world, you would want four Critical Chance, two Critical Damage lines, or three Critical Chance and three Critical Damage lines, if you can get those perfect items. In addition to that, the secondary lines would be, again, Physical damage, person dual damage, maybe attack speed lines, and if you really don't get anything better, then flying damage, but that's really suboptimal line for sniper. And the legendary plus one arrow line does work for sniper's normal attack, but he already has multiple arrows for his normal attack, so adding one to that won't really help you that much, won't really give you that such a huge boost. And we have a better hero for those plus one arrow lines coming up in next, so Please be patient for a while. And the runes are the same as for Bowmaster, but there are chances that you won't even need to get runes for your sniper because in the late game you will usually drop sniper and take Dark Assassin instead. But nevertheless, he is an extremely strong hero to be used for your early and mid game, so do invest in your sniper. And that's it for the damage dealers. We have our final unit left, which is the Dark Elf. And by the way, if you need information on what kind of orbs you should get for all these heroes and more, check out the orb guide video I posted earlier. I will link it down in the description box below down there so you can find it. Okay, so Dark Elf. Dark Elf's role in your way build is not to be a damage dealer, but instead to be one of the two units in the entire game that are able to heal your castle. Now, how can shooting arrows at enemies repair your castle? I have no idea. Witchcraft. Now her base damage is rather low, and the single best line you can get for Dark Elf is the legendary plus one arrow line. Finally, we are there. With that line, she can shoot one extra arrow per each normal attack, making you be able to heal yourself more and more. Or two extra arrows if you have this line on both weapon and accessory. And this item, this line, takes priority over every other line for your Dark Elf, just like plus one someone you need did for Giants. And after that, the secondary best lines are... You guessed it, critical chance and critical damage lines. Perhaps you are starting to see a pattern in here. And after that, the secondary lines would be physical damage or person dual damage or attack speed lines. Even flat damage can help you in early game because of her low base damage, but eventually flat damage will always fall out, so the person dual damages will be better ones. And usable runes would be attack speed runes, physical damage runes, and critical damage runes. Now, physical damage and critical damage runes are only available from the expert dungeon, so they are out of reach for majority of players, so attack speed runes will do, but Dark Elf is not on, on a higher tier priority for runes, so make sure you get those attack piece runes for your other units first, because they will need them much more than you Dark Elf most likely will. And now remember, good items are the key for you to progress on higher and higher levels, so once you are able to get those L and E tier items, start farming for those. Until then, those S and A tier items will be enough for you, and for those, just try to get any damage boosting lines for your damage dealing heroes, that will be enough for you until you can get those L and E tier items, which are the best items you will want to get for your heroes.